We're Gina and Steven with Live Deeper 10X, and we're traveling the world one house sit at a time. That's not like, a, that's not a Florida lizard, okay? I can handle a Florida lizard. For the it's rack. a Komodo dragon. No, it's not. But it's really big and it's yeah. like... It reminds me of one time when we were living in Florida and in the middle of the night I saw a roach crawl That's across the his forehead. <laughs> Here's the Komodo dragon. Oh man! I can't, uh, I can't place anymore! So that might have seemed kind of small compared to the energy level <laughs> that was being <laughs> developed here. It could be toxic and poisonous. Oh, come on! Travel the world on the cheap. You really can do that. Make sure they don't go which way. What is my job? One way is by house sitting, like we've talked about. Another way is by doing work aways. We're starting off with working on a raised bed to plant cauliflower and other vegetables in this bed. So we pulled weeds this morning and then we're going to be preparing the bed with uh, soil, compost, and hay. And then eventually we'll be adding our seedlings to this bed. So Salome has his style of doing his raised beds. Moringa. Moringa? He comes oh. from Guinea and he has learned how to do all kinds of gardening and cultivation with his family. It's been a family tradition in his community and he is watering the garden first and then we will place the hay down and then plant after. We are in the mushroom cellar and we're doing something I think probably we have never thought we would do, which is getting a cellar that was dug out by hand and ready for a mushroom spores. Do you want to explain what we're doing? We're going to varnish all of the wood areas that you see. Then we're going to spackle the holes and then we're going to paint that and then we're going to do a continuing whitewash on the floor. And you'll see here, this is a natural mushroom that grew on its own here, which means that the cellar is actually doing its job. It looks pretty good. What do you think? Looks good? Thumbs up if you like it. <laughs> okay. All right, we're back. The next day, so we varnished these cabinets, painted all that you see, patched the holes, and then today what we're going to be doing is... I have what appears to be the floor that we're <laughs> going to be using in this bag. So we mix this, it looks like gypsum I guess, with water and you just scoop around this stuff and you just Slap it down. This would be a great Mr. Miyagi thing. <laughs> Slap the water. <laughs> I'm slapping paint as I sing. I don't know if it's actually, I mean, it, it just feels like, I don't understand. Nature finds a way. These are roots from the trees surrounding us, trying to reacquire their lost hole. This is the well, end of day three or thereabout. What are your thoughts on that? See, here's the deal. Stephen and I, we didn't like to do stuff in our own house, <laughs> much less other people's houses. Doing a work away gives you a chance to really give back. It's definitely worth it. At the end of day three, I feel like we've made some progress. We've learned how to do some permaculture gardening, which I'd never known about. And we're learning how to prep a room for a mushroom cellar that honestly, I didn't even know there was such a thing as a mushroom mm -hmm. cellar. So the fact that I'm participating in something like that is very cool. Okay. So here we are doing something that has been done for thousands of years from all over the Mediterranean. 
We are picking olives from olive trees that are going to be taken to a press to be made into olive oil. The black ones are the best ones to do because they're the most ripe. And it's seen as kind of a holy experience because we read about them throughout the Bible, throughout the Quran, and throughout the Jewish tradition as well. We are picking olives and it doesn't matter if the stems are still on them. <laughs> It appears as though we have picked our first olive tree. We are so American. Yeah, I think we uh, <laughs> we finished this tree. Mind you, all of the other workers have probably gone through four in half the time that we did. Here's the here's the problem. We were given two of these baskets, and that's what we have at the end of this tree. So by my calculation, next Tuesday we'll be finished filling these. Gina, Gina volunteered Stephen for something. I said I didn't know if I was going to get separation papers by the time <laughs> this was over. <laughs> Stephen did the fastest editing job he's ever done in his entire video career in the last three hours. The video has not been shown yet. That's the thing. Uh, normally it takes me two to three days to do what I've done in the last three hours, but I'm getting ready to ship it over to the guy who's going to be showing it at this party tonight, and I I have not even watched it. So I there could be big gaps. There could be, there's no telling we're how gonna this look is going to end Let's, up. We're going to watch it first before we no, send it we to him. No, we're going to send it to him and no, let him watch it. No, we're nope, going to watch it first. No, nope, we're going to send so it to him So let's first. explain, let's, let's back mm. up. We're going to rewind for a second. So there is this really cool sort of experience that we're going to be participating in tonight called a yakitori immersion dinner here at the sanctuary. This yakitori dinner is kind of a really cool first time here at the sanctuary and there's a young guy that's going to be doing it. He's from Mexico and Stephen was asked to put together a prelude video for a reception tonight that was going to be occurring an hour before the dinner. So the reason why Steven's sweating it a bit here is because he's never put a video together this quickly before. It helps him learn how to work under pressure. So we shall see how things turn out. So tell us your name. So my name is Alan Milan and I make chicken skewers. Chicken skewers. But there's a special name for that, right? Yes, it's called yakitori, okay. uh, which literally trans uh, translates to grilled bird. Um, yakitori is the, uh, if you see this skewer here, this is called kashiwa. It's a chicken thigh. If you see the shape from the bottom to the top, it'll cook evenly, even from the side. It's thin and then it's thick. There's layers of fat in between every, every uh, single piece. And the way that you do that, in the end, when you're cooking it, all of the pieces of meat will actually melt together. Uh, there's no way to tell when this skewer is cooked. You can't open it, you can't see inside of it. So what you have to do is you have to bounce it. And based on the bounce and how much it bounces is how it's cooking. In New York especially, I can find vegetables year-round. I can find broccoli year-round. It doesn't really taste like anything, but I can find broccoli year-round. Um, so, It's easy from a learning point of view because you can learn how to skewer these vegetables perfectly. We're so fortunate as we get ready to leave tomorrow to head on to our next adventure to close out this chapter of our time here at Sanctuary Suleiman to a beautiful dinner tonight. Where were you going? <gasps> we were driving to the desert. Why? <laughs> because we wanted to ride a camel. Why? <laughs> because we wanted to see the desert. Why? What an amazing experience this was for us. We all need to change that mindset that travel is too expensive. Workaways are available all over the world where you work a little bit 
provide an important contribution to somebody who needs it and receive room and board in return. We're so lucky that we get to witness the transformation of the sanctuary, to see the life that kind of grows here, from the vegetation, to the soil, to the food that comes from it, the animals. Come back, okay. And how all of it is a perfect cycle within this ecosystem. Sanctuary Sliman, just outside of Marrakesh, was a great place for us to get our feet wet in this type of opportunity.